In this presentation, we will be showing you how to easily create textures and patterns from a seed component using the texture area modeling tool that's available in Aspire. This flexible tool allows us to change the size and scale of the seed, as well as the location, spacing, and orientation of the resultant pattern. A large number of seed clip up tiles have been added to the software that are ideally suited for use with this tool, as well as fill tiles that will further automate the process, and the latter will be covered at the end of the presentation. Okay, so let's start by creating a new part. So under File, New, I'm going to create a new part that is 24 inches in X, 24 inches in Y, just three quarters of an inches thick. Our Z0 will be from the material surface, and our XY datum will be in the lower left hand corner and we're using a high level of model resolution. So with that, I'm now faced with a blank page ready to start adding some clip art and exploring the capabilities of the tool. So from the clip art menu, we have a range of different clip art that's included with the software and this will vary from VCarve Pro to Aspire. So here we're showing the available clip art in Aspire and we're gonna start by looking at the animal section here and this has already been pre-downloaded, so it's all ready for me to use. So I'm simply going to scroll down and pick the eagle's head. And as I double click that now, it will then um, copy that into my 2D workspace. And if I tile the windows, you can also see it in the 3D workspace. So with that, I'm just going to come back to the modeling menu now and go straight up to the uh, create a texture area component uh, command which is on the top of the menu in the modeling tools and we're faced now with a form with a number of different parameters that we can explore but immediately what I'll do is just press apply and you'll see now it's taken that seed component that seed eagle and created a texture uh, through the extents of our XY part okay so with that we can now maybe look to uh, further modify this and uh, if you look at the very top of the menu here you can see that we have selected transform object you can see the item is selected and we have the grab handles etc so I can now obviously modify that in 2d and you'll see that changing both the 2d and the 3d view and I can manipulate that as such and continue to grow and stretch that texture and it will keep the parameters with which it's been created if I close the form down, we can actually see from the component tree that we have the original seed component listed, but obviously it's not drawn, and the new resultant sort of texture that's being created as being the highlighted one. Okay, and I can switch that off, and you can see the original seed component, and now I can switch on the original texture. Now, if I select that and actually come back into the form, we still have the ability to further modify it so I can further you know, change its scale. I can even come into the edit texture area component and you'll see that it's highlighted one of the seed components and I can now expand that if I wanted to change the scale of the actual texture and even move that to see if I wanted to shift it around. So until that is baked, we can always come back in then and further modify the pattern. So with that, I'm just gonna close that out now and actually uh, delete that component that we have there okay so we've got our original back and I'm going to come back to the original command and just select the clip art and apply that throughout so what I'm going to do now is just really explore some of the other parameters on this form we've got an area called spacing XY shift and reflection we'll take a look at all of these at the moment so let's take a look at spacing first so okay this allows us to um, create a gap in between sort of adjacent uh, seed uh, tiles. So I'm going to increase this just by dynamically so you can see this just increasing. So we're just actually increasing this up, which is giving us a, a spacing um, along the row. And we can, if we reduce that down now to zero and come back and do it the same with Y, you can see that we're just going to increase the gap in Y. Okay, so I'm just hitting zero on the form and then space which will bring that back to its original and now we're going to look at the x y shift okay so this allows us to sort of essentially uh, uh, create a, a shifting row or a shifting column so i'm just going to use the once again the slider for this and you'll see that just gradually creeping so the every other row is moving along okay so i'm just going to put that back to zero now and move down to the uh, sort of column shift so this will be every other column you'll just see that starting to move upwards okay and bring that back to zero okay so with that now 
Uh, we're now in a position really to start looking at the reflection. So what I'll do is if you focus in on the uh, sort of left hand four um, eagles that we have here, and I'll do the same in the 3D view, and we'll start to move these around using the reflection, okay? So at the moment, they're all currently in the same orientation. And what I can do is I'm just now going to take these right hand two and just turn them around so their beaks are facing the other way. So I can just apply that. Okay, and now I'm going to take the uh, top left one and flip this one, but also completely sort of uh, flip upside down the one on the right. So I'm just going to change that orientation there. Okay, so you can see now we're going to look to try and interlock these beaks, and now I'm going to do the same at the bottom as well. And so we just changed the orientation. So we've got the sort of, we changed the shape and we can even go back in and change the scale, which we'll do later. But what I want to do now is to combine this sort of uh, change of orientation using the reflection tools, but combine that with some spacing and shift. So in essence, we want to bring the tip of the sort of beak here that I'm focusing on and really move that underneath the beak here to create more of an interlocking sort of uh, finish. So I'm going to use the spacing here and just creep that. You can see actually we're moving away. We want to move it the other way. So I'm going to go negative here, which is good. So you can come in and overlap. And I'm just going to bring that right the way in, maybe to about minus 20. So if we just get rid of that and put minus 20, and we'll see that that's brought that in. And now I need to close this gap here. So once again, I'm just going to crease this up. And I think probably around about 10 is what's required here. So 10, and we should have something about right. And if we now just basically zoom to fit on both of those views, we can see that we have quite a nice neat structure where we've used the seed tile of the eagle and combine that with a series of sort of reflection moves and some spacing and X, Y shift to create this effect. And even after we've done this, we can come back in now and edit the components. So you can see there that bottom left hand eagle is highlighted with a dotted line. I can stretch that and instantly you'll see the texture being updated. And we can keep coming back to that and it will honor all the other parameters in the form even though I'm modifying the C component itself. At present, the texture is limited to the size of our job space, but we can limit this to a defined vector. So what I'm gonna do now is just close out this uh, command and delete these two components here. So I'll delete those out and come back into my drawing menu and just create a nice little uh, ellipse through the center. So something round about that sort of size there, no particular dimensions. And I'm gonna come back in now to my clip art and I'm gonna select in this case the frog. So with this, I'm just gonna just double click. This will bring it into our workspace in the center. I'm actually gonna move it away from the center there and just slightly change its size, okay? So I've changed the scale there and I'm gonna come back to the command now and just shift and pick that vector, okay? And I can do that before I come into the command or during the command. So now it's realized that I don't want to confine my texture to my workspace, but actually to the defined vector. So as I apply that now, you can see that's just gonna go into that region, okay? And once that's been set, I can obviously move that around. It won't be carrying the vector with it, okay? Just the vector was used to sort of predefine that shape, although the actual texture does carry the parameters of that vector and the fact that I can actually scale this now as if I was stretching the vector, okay? And you'll see that the texture increases to fill that area. I can even come into the edit texture area component and pick a single component and maybe stretch that now. And you'll see now it's gonna rejig that. So we've got a larger frog within that defined area, okay? So it's, it's confined to that original limiting uh, vector, but once we've um, created that, we have the ability to stretch and change that shape as if we were stretching the original vector itself, okay? So with that, I'm just gonna close out that form now and just delete out these two components and we're gonna delete that vector. Now we're gonna take a look at some of the specific tiles that have been created 
for use with this particular command. So we're going to go down to the clip art menu again and uh, the first to note is the texture area tile. So I'm going to click on that which will show the contents below it and you can see there is a variety of some sort of single textures and then some sort of larger textures that look like they should be seamless. So there is a blend of two different types here. Some we're going to use to explore lots of different shapes and other ones we're just going to paste in and tile through a defined area. So let's start with that first one. In this case I might take this egg web. So I'm just going to double click on that now and that will be shown in the 2D and 3D view. Come straight up to the modeling tab and up to the texture area tool and simply apply that. And now this is a component that's just meant to be uh, a seamless uh, pasting across the whole of a workspace or within a defined vector. We're not going to be using any of the spacing, shifting or reflection parameters to modify this. Although of course we can come in and edit the texture area component if I wanted to change its scale. And of course once the texture has been created I can further modify and rotate it etc if need be. So I'm just going to close out and let's take a look at another one of those. So I'm just going to simply delete these two out and take a look at another sort of seamless tile. And we can scroll down and you can see, for instance, the scallops here. So I'm going to simply double click to bring that into uh, our workspace, come into the modeling uh, commands, up to the texture area component and instantly apply. And you can see this has created a, a sort of seamless a texture across the whole of our workspace and once again I can come in now and change that and even move this around if need be okay so I can move that around if I wanted to create a different edge uh, to, or top and bottom so you can see there that this is a one type of uh, seed component that's being created that is ideal for using with this tool in this case if we want to create sort of a seamless edge throughout the whole part okay so I'm just going to close that down now and delete out those two components and we're going to come back into the clip art and take a look at some of the other items that we've got on display here now in particular we've got this domed pyramid scallop okay so I'm just going to just double click to bring that into our workspace and you can see it there in 3d and 2d so it's quite a unique um, effect I'm actually going to draw the uh, modeling plane off here so we can just see it's in, in its entirety and we're going to start immediately looking at some of the parameters so as I come up to the form now and apply you'll see that we get this uh, initial start pattern okay although these particular uh, clip art components are ideal for creating quite a wide range of different types of texture so uh, one thing I am going to do is just simply make this a little smaller as a start point. So I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller. And we're going to start by adding some spacing. So in this case, we're just going to explore the different concepts. So I'm going to increase this up to 10%. OK, and you'll see this uh, the little shift in X and maybe a little shift in Y. OK, and then I can maybe bring that back down to zero for both of those. OK, and now we're going to go down to the X, Y shift. So this is where we can start to create sort of a bit of a tiled pattern. So if I use a 50% a row shift there and you'll see that we get that tiled effect sort of horizontally. And if I bring that back down to zero and then basically change the uh, column shift to 50 and you'll see that we get um, a different effect where we're tiling it vertically rather than horizontally. OK, so let's bring that back down to zero now and then we can start to look at really how we can make some quite radical changes to the texture with some fairly simple changes in reflection. OK, so let's concentrate on our lower four tiles that we've got within our texture. And first we're going to manipulate the right hand two okay, of the four. So I'm going to flip them the other way and reapply and instantly you can see there's quite a significant change and really what we're about to do next really quite radically changes that to create a completely different pattern so with this I'm just going to make sure that they're all facing in towards it themselves and reapply and you can see that we've got quite a different effect we've got this sort of circular perimeter now that we've created by the nature of the orientation of the sort of single tile so you can see where these very specific uh, texture area tiles can really create some quite dramatic effects with uh, some fairly simple manipulation 
Okay, so with that, I'm going to close out and we'll take a look at another example. So I'm just going to delete these two now and come back in and take a look at the clip art. And we're going to scroll down and pick a different type. So here we've got this sort of rough weave here. So this is a single part of a weave. So that'll bring me into the 2D and 3D. And I'm instantly just going to scale this up. I want to create something a little larger. So with this, I'm going to come back to the command now and instantly just apply the current settings. And as you can see, we're not going to get a particularly great effect. OK, so with this, we do need to manipulate both the spacing in X and also the X, Y shift in, in particular the Y shift. So I'm going to just um, create some uh, sort of overlap in X. So I'm going to go minus 50 in terms of the spacing. Okay, we shall bring those together. And then we're going to look at applying a 50% shift in Y. Okay, so that's going to sort of shift every other column and just apply that up. And you can see now that we've got um, a, an overlapping effect there. But of course, what I need to do now is just to sort of reorientate okay the right hand too so i'm just going to flip them now and reapply that and you can see that we've got the effect that we're looking for which is this particular weave so that was once again a combination of a very simple single texture area sort of tile but with the use of the spacing um some y shift and a bit of reflection orientation we've got quite a dramatic um, 3d effect so I'm going to close out that and we'll take a look at one more before we move on and just delete those, come back to the clip art and we're going to take this very simple sort of diamond plate. So we've got a single piece of a diamond plate which I'll bring in now and come into the modeling tool and once again just simply apply that. Now this won't give us a particularly good effect. OK, and if we actually go in and change the parameters that we had before, so that was minus 50 we were using with the previous and we were using 50 in the Y shift and we were just orientating those like so and apply. Now this doesn't really get us quite the effect that we were looking for for our sort of checker plate look. So I'm going to come back up now and just reduce this down to minus 33.3 and we're also going to add some um, positive spacing in Y, so 33.3 there and just reapply that and you can see there that we get the effect that we were looking for. So once again these components have been specifically created to, to, for use with this tool and the fact that you can create with like a wide variety of different resultant textures. So we're just going to close that down now and I'm just going to delete out those two components. And now we're going to explore issues where somebody may want to create a rotated texture. So let's come back to the clip art now and I'm going to select a sort of seamless uh, component that we're going to use with the command, in this case ridges one. And I'm just instantly going to change the scale of this so we can see this a bit more closely and come into the texture area tool and instantly apply to create a texture through the full extents of our XY page. So we see that there now, we can see the ridges are running roughly parallel to the X axis, but in this case, I want to have them running parallel to the Y axis. So naturally I would think, well, I would need to go in and modify my seed component. So I'm gonna close that down now, delete out the actual resultant texture, reselect my original seed component, and I'm just gonna hit nine on the keyboard twice to rotate it through 90 degrees come back up to the command now and press apply and i would expect that to run vertically but clearly it doesn't it's still running parallel to the x-axis and that's because the command remembers the aspect of the c component before the rotation so it looks at its original status okay not the fact that we've modified it OK, so what I need to do now, there's two different ways that we can create the rotated texture. If I close the form down, I can just simply select the resultant texture and hit nine on the keyboard twice to rotate it through 180 degrees. OK, or I can actually bake the original seed component so that the command uses that in its rotated form. So I'm going to delete out the component now and come back to the clip art which is currently running vertically but what I need to do is come back up to here where it says bake selected component okay so I'm going to bake that now 
okay as you can see here it's got baked at the end of its name if I now come back up to the command and reapply you can see there that we now have this texture where the ridges are running vertically rather than horizontally so that's just a thing to note that we'll want to create rotated textures remember to bake your original clip art before coming into the command or alternatively you can rotate the resultant pattern after the fact the next issue we're going to take a look at is the exciting aspect of being able to take an image that you've downloaded from the internet and bring that in to create a seed component whereby you can then uh, use that to create a full textured pattern. So I'm going to close out this form now and just delete out these two components. Okay. And we're going to come and select an image that's been uh, downloaded. And this happens to be a seamless tile for some bricks. So I'm going to use from our modeling tools here, create a component from selected or imported bitmap. Well, in this case, it's going to be an imported bitmap. So within my your folder, texture area tile files, there is the wall.jpg. Okay, now this happens to be a seamless tile, so we'll be able to, it will match top and bottom and left and right. So I'm going to select that now, which will bring that into my 2D and 3D space. I'm actually going to just scale this up a little, okay, so we can see it in slightly larger scale. And you can see from the 3D view that it's essentially quite a textured component. So we've got um, some noise in there that we would need to remove. So my gut feeling is maybe I should actually um, smooth this before I create the texture. So that's what I'll do. I'll come up to the uh, apply smoothing filter. Okay. Now with that, I've got this command here for smoothing. It's set to minimum. So I'm just going to increase this up now. Okay. So I'm going to get to a point where I'm sort of happy with it. Okay. Maybe that's a bit too much. That seems about good at that particular level. So I'm okay with that now and I'm going to come back up to my texture area tool and instantly uh, select my component and then apply that throughout. Okay. Ah, so we can see there is an issue. Okay. So if I just resize my 3D view, okay, we can see that we have ridges and this is where the smoothing has been applied to the edge of the original seed component. Uh, so now we have Admittedly, it looks like everything matches, but we have a rounding um, in between the two tiles. So what I'm going to do now is just close out this form and just use the control Z to come back to where we were before. OK, so with this now we've got our original component and I'm just going to hit undo to bring it back to its original sort of with noise state. So the best way to attack this is to select the component and then come up to the texture area tool and actually to apply the smoothing after you've created the texture. So I simply apply that now throughout so we can see that we get a lovely texture from that. I can close out the form. I've got the component already selected and I'm gonna to come to apply smoothing. It's gonna ask that I want to bake that, okay, because currently it's a texture, that's okay. It will open the form now and immediately I can just come back in and just increase the smoothing and then I can get the desired effect. So that's just one thing to remember that if you're going to bring in a seamless tile uh, through an image where there may be some noise in it that you want to filter out, remember to remove that noise after you've created the texture, not before. So in other words, don't modify the original seed component. Okay, the final thing we're going to take a look at are the fill tiles. So what I'm going to do is just actually remove these two components first, okay, and delete them away. And we're going to come back to our clip art. And within the different folders we've got, underneath texture area tiles are texture fill tiles. Now this is quite an automated sort of neat addition to the textures that we can create through the form in that these uh, components have already sort of been pre-configured with spacing and uh, shifting and any particular reflection and then saved out as a separate piece of clip art that can be pasted in and then immediately scaled and it will reflect the uh, parameters that it was uh, used to create it when it was originally created as a texture. So let's take a look at those now. And if we reflect really on the domed pyramid example that we looked at earlier on, 
Okay, so I'm going to click on the dome pyramid to bring it into our 3D and 2D space. And you'll see that presented on the screen. And then I can come immediately down. You'd think, well, I need to come up to the texture area component tool. But that's not the case because, once again, this component has already been pre-configured and then saved out, ready to be used as a fill tile. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I'm going to do is just reposition this somewhere in the lower left-hand corner, and I can simply select the top right-hand edge and drag this. And I, I would think that I'd be changing the scale of my original seed, but I'm not. I'm actually creating a texture. And you can see that the orientation of the adjacent sort of tiles has already been reorientated to give this effect. So if we remember back to the first part of the presentation, I would need to you know, have applied um, a lot of reorientation using the reflection tool to get this desired effect. But because this has already been pre-configured, it means that when I go to stretch to uh, change the size of the texture, it keeps the original settings with which it's created. Now, let's take a look at how we might create one of those and then add this into the database. So I'm going to delete this out now. And as you can see, there's not the concept of a texture being created on top of the original component. It's simply a changing of the size of that component and we automatically get the texture within. So I'm going to delete that now and come back to the clip art and come back to the animal section. And we're going to take a look at, remember the first example we looked at, which was the eagle. So I'm going to pop the eagle's head back in now and immediately come up to the modeling tool and just go to the texture area component and apply that. Now, in order to get the interlocking head, if you remember, we had to change the uh, right hand side two to flip them around. So I'll apply that. Then I had to flip the top two and apply that. And then flip the bottom two and apply that. And come up to the spacing and apply a negative spacing of minus 20. And just check that was OK. And then we need a little bit of an X, Y shift, but a Y shift of 10%. So quite a lot of changes there to really get the desired effect. OK, so now let's say, for instance, I want to use this on a sort of reoccurring basis. I don't want to have to keep reading in the eagle's head and modifying the parameters to get this particular pattern. So I'm going to close this down. now. I'm happy with that. And I'm just going to simply select the texture and just... Um, scale it down slightly. It doesn't have to be any particular scale. It's purely to a size that will make sense when it appears in my clip art library. OK, so I've scaled it down to roughly four so I can understand exactly how they're going to go together. OK, so with that, that's now ready for me to export as a bit of clip art that I can put into the fill tiles folder for use as a repetitive texture at a later process. So the component is selected in the component tree and I'm going to export that as a 3D clip art now. OK, so when the form opens, I'm going to locate it in that fill tiles area. So you can see here the public documents, vectric files, clip art, texture fill tiles. And I'm going to save this now as an eagle. So eagle. OK, so we're going to put that in to that area there and save that. OK, so. What next? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is delete out the two uh, components that we already have. OK, and then I'm going to come back to the clip art and then we're going to come back to the fill tile section. And we can see here that we've got this eagle that has been added into that folder. So with that now, I can double click to bring it into my uh, space. And immediately, as soon as I scale it, you can see I'm getting exactly the shape that we originally created. There's no need for me to go into the texture area component tool and actually reapply all the spacing and shifting and reflection in order to create it. I've simply created that as a texture, scaled that down so I can roughly see it in my clip art library, then write that out from the clip art library into the texture fill tiles folder. And simply then I can pick that up and just scale it without the need to use the command. So this is us taking really it on a stage further by taking a 
component that you may have pre-configured to create a texture using a range of different parameters and say, do you know what? I'm going to be using this on an often basis. How can I make this a little easier for myself? Well, that's very simple now. Simply just to save that out as a clip art piece into the texture field tiles area. And then you can simply drag that out and then simply change the X, Y extents of that texture. So quite a neat tool there to round that off where we've actually sort of further streamlined the process for those people that are using common textures.